What's up guys, it's And It's Gone, and today we'll be doing another deep dive, but this time on the Mariners. Almost every year, there's that surprise team in which a team that has slowly built up a great farm system finally produces after spending money in that offseason before. We've seen this before with the Padres, Blue Jays, and Cubs, and I believe that the Mariners will join that list going into the 2022 season. The Mariners, after the 2018 season, had little to no direction and a league-worst farm system that only really had Kyle Lewis. Then Jerry DePoto decided that the worst thing a team could be was mediocre and decided to blow up his meddling team. They boosted their league works farm system into the top 10 and then eventually into the league best farm system with some big trades and smart drafting of college players. We've seen this story before with the 2020 Padres, 2015 Cubs, and 2018 Braves as a league best farm system got aided by some top free agent signings and looked to make a run at the postseason for years to come. The Mariners are the next team and I will try to explain why through analyzing some of their top prospects and young talent along with showing what they could do to make sure that that happens. Currently only 6% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if y'all do, not only would it help me grow my channel but I'd also very much appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get on to the video. As always, we'll start with the prospects in their league best farm system and what better to start out with than their best prospect in Julio Rodriguez. While he's ranked number two in MLB's pipeline, short to only Adley Rutschman, I believe that he has the higher ceiling and is more likely to be a superstar than Adley. Signed by the Mariners as the 10th ranked prospect in 2017 for $1.75 million, Julio has played well at every stop he's gone at. He has a minor league career OPS of 953 and has only gotten better since 2018. 2021 has been his best year so far, hitting an insane 350 with an on-base percentage of 453 and slugging 554, along with 10 home runs and 11 stolen bases. He's a big physical outfielder at 6'3", 180 pounds, with the potential to add even more strength to his frame. Scouts see big 30-30 potential in Julio and believe that he can be the next Ronald Acuna Jr. During the 2021 season, Julio has played both right and center field. While he can handle playing at center field, he doesn't have the elite speed that is suited for an elite center fielder and will play better at corner outfield position due to his plus arm. Scouts also say that Julio brings passion and joy to the game and just loves to play it in general, meaning that he'll become one of the most beloved players once he reaches the MLB next year. George Kirby and Emerson Hancock were both college pitchers that were drafted in the first round by the Mariners in back-to-back -back drafts. They also have very similar pitch repertoires with the fastball, curveball, slider, and changeup, and have above average control over their pitches. Starting with George Kirby, and he is known more for his command, but has enough raw potential to be a great MLB pitcher. His fastball currently sits in the low 90s, but he can ramp it up to 98 at times with some pinpoint accuracy when he's on his game. His best secondary pitch is his sinking changeup that pairs well with his fastball, but his other secondary pitches in his slider and changeup are not far behind. Due to his command, he has been able to blaze through the minors and should make his major league debut sometime this year or next year. Hancock, on the other hand, may be better all around and while he doesn't have the command that Kirby has, his pure stuff makes up for it. His fastball, or fastballs, as he has a running two-seamer and a four-seamer, sit in the 94 to 99 mile per hour range and they are his best pitches. While he's on top of his game, all three of his secondary pitches can be above average and great out pitches. Currently, his slider is his best out pitch and sits in the mid 80s while his changeup isn't close behind. If this duo stays healthy and combined with Logan Gilbert, who's on the major league roster, the Mariners can have their own big three of outstanding young pitchers. If it weren't for Julio Rodriguez being so amazing, Noel V. Marte would be the best prospect with the highest upside in their farm system. The Mariners have shown that they were one of the top international scouting teams in the league as Marte is their second potential superstar signed in two straight years. As a top 10 prospect in the 2018 international signing class, he was signed for $1.55 million and he immediately began to show why he was signed for so much, leading the Dominican Summer League in total bases. Marte has a lethal power speed combo with 26 career home runs and 40 career stolen bases and just under 700 career at bats. Marte has shown the ability to hit the ball to all fields, but the majority of his power comes to his pool side, and as soon as he grows more strength, he could begin to hit to pat for power to all fields. He's an average shortstop and can hold his own at the position, but will probably move to third base once going into the majors, where he'll have the potential to be a gold glover there. Scouts even say he can move to the outfield as well. Overall, 
He's incredibly raw at 19, but he's incredibly talented. The last prospect that I really want to talk about is their newest prospect and the one with the longest journey to go, and Harry Ford. Drafted with the 12th overall pick, Ford may have been a bit of a reach, but overall he's insanely talented, especially as an all-around athlete. Scouts constantly compare him to Craig Biggio for their athleticism and the ability to play catcher, second base, or even center field. He's a strong, stocky guy at 5'10 and 200 pounds and uses that strength to have a great swing. Ford has some of the best bat speed in his high school class and has constantly made hard contact against some of the top high school pitchers in the area. At the East Coast Pro Showcase in 2020, Ford impressed running a 6'4'2 60-yard dash which is great not even taking into account that he's a catcher. Ford should be able to stay at catcher, but in the minors, he needs to work on his footwork to get the most out of his throws to second and third base, but that is a very minor issue. As a quick and agile catcher, Ford is able to block some balls that many other catchers wouldn't be able to do. On his off days, Ford can also play a less physically demanding position like second, third, or outfield as well. On their major league team, they have about half of that great farm system that has already graduated into the majors. The player to watch here is Jared Kelenic, whose ceiling rivals only Julio Rodriguez as a pure hitting left-handed outfielder. He has an advanced approach behind the plate and consistently makes hard contact and combine that with his raw power and that makes him a great hitter, especially from his pool side. As an athletic guy, he fits in as an average center fielder that would be better suited for a corner outfield position. Him, Julio, and 2020 Rookie of the Year Kyle Lewis will create one of, if not the best, young outfield in the MLB. However, the Mariners are going to have to compete next year, so some of the main players that will contribute on that team is Kyle Seeger, Mitch Haniger, and Dylan Moore, which will provide much needed experience to a very young team. The fact that the Mariners are somewhat competitive this year only provides valuable experience to the young players that are on the roster. On the pitching side, They're going to be led by Logan Gilbert, Marco Gonzalez, and Yusei Kikuchi, which as mid to back end starters are going to be very solid. Their bullpen is as good, if not better, than their starting rotation, with some great young relievers in Diego Castillo and Eric Swanson, along with Sean Doolittle. Overall, this is a solid team right now that's only going to get better with additions from the league best farm system. This team is already looking good, but they need a couple of pieces to get them over the hump. We see this with every team nearing the end of their rebuild as the young players who don't yet cost that much as they're in pre-arbitration are then aided with some stud free agents. The Padres signed Eric Hosmer and then Manny Machado, the Cubs signed John Lester and Hayward, and the Blue Jays signed Hyungjin Ryu and George Springer. Due to the Mariners' influx of young talent, their 2022 payroll is currently sitting around 50 to 55 million, depending on arbitration. So that leaves around 60 million in free agency if the Mariners are willing to spend money. So, acting like we have a shopping list, what do the Mariners really need? On the hitting side, not much. I guess they could use a better DH, but a one year 15 to 20 million dollar deal to Nelson Cruz should do the trick. What they really need though is pitching and more specifically a veteran ace that's not only gonna contribute now, but teach the young stud pitching prospects what it takes to be a major league pitcher. I would love to see the Mariners pursue an ace like Max Scherzer or Robbie Ray and sign them to a two to four year deal worth between 50 to 120 million dollars. The remaining money should be spent on some bullpen arms, but otherwise that's it. And that's what that a team would look like a playoff team for sure. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed, please like, share and subscribe and you can comment down below new video ideas. I might do an off season plan video for the Minnesota Twins and then maybe more deep dives on other rebuilding teams like the Orioles and Diamondbacks. But if you have another request, just comment it down below. I'll do it probably.